Hey guys, Armor Gun here today with your daily dose of gun mutation, your gun pill. As it were, we're in the gun room and we've actually done a few new things. This Dasco A frame rolling rack is new. We've completely redone this wall. That'll probably be a separate video because I want to go through every gun and tell you where I got it. Or at least my first awesome experience with it. But that'll be a separate video. Today's focus is something of an expansion pack. All the guns on this wall are new to the channel, relatively new anyways, and some of them have already been in their own shorts, but for the most part, they've been uh, pretty under wraps. All right, guys, kick back, relax, grab a bevy or whatever. I'm gonna grab one gun at a time, give you a brief, brief overview. And while I don't wanna take away from or make redundant the little one minute shorts that you guys love, where I kind of give each gun its own little mini overview, I guess. So while I will cover each one of these guns briefly, I'll also tell you their origin story, where I got them and something fun about them. So let's get into it. Guys, she's a classic, the workhorse, the dumb gun that the Americans decided to adopt post World War II when they should have went with the FAL or even the G3, but the FAL I think is cooler. Sorry, Bernie. But that said, the M14 is still a pretty cool rifle. Like the M1 Garand, suck it, but magfed and chambered in 7.62 NATO, which was all the hotness at the time. Now this guy right here I got from, nice trigger by the way, Switzer's Auction in Ontario, Canada. And while I should have saved my pennies, I did need a real deal M14 in the collection. Also stay tuned for a Battle Rifles of the World Volume 2, which is going to feature this among some other heavy hitters. Next up, we have the H&R Rising. This is the Model 50. It was, believe it or not, a submachine gun used in World War II, mostly in the Pacific Theater. And this is, got some really neat things. You got a charging handle underneath in there. It's super crazy. Something of a competitor to the Thompson. It is lighter, also chambered in 45 ACP. And I do like it, but I would still take the Thompson. <laughs> which I just so happened to get from the same collector who was retiring. Man, what a beauty. This is a 1928. This is the Gangster. Well, actually the Gangster model was a 1921. And surprisingly enough, these actually had a last round bolt catch of a sorts for open bolts. It's kind of interesting. Basically when the mag was empty, the bolt would stay locked to the rear. Really nice feature and not very common. Fun fact, the Thompson was the first gun to actually use the name submachine gun. While the German MP18 did precede this gun, MP stood for machine pistol. More or less, my German's a little rusty, but that's that's more or less what it was. Also, boom, stock's gone. And this is, uh, man, made for a violin case. Ooh, uh, you guys are probably interested in what I paid for each thing. I can probably tell you guys that. But first, a word from our 15 second sponsor, Mira Safety. These guys have literally brought the gas mask into the 21st century. I'm super stoked. This is, again, with all the crazy stuff going on in the world, these are pretty awesome and inexpensive, very important tools and resources for your household to have. They've been kind enough to give me an affiliate link in the description below. By using it to support them, you are in turn supporting me, which is literally funding your gun mutation. I don't think YouTube would mind too much. So the M14, that was about a grand. The 1928, which is Savage produced, beautiful gun. 2250 and the rising which is also in beautiful shape i think i paid 1100 for that with a second mag now things are getting crinky this is the aks 74u let's break that down ak 74 means this was the model 74 these actually didn't come around until i think 1979 or so the 74 is unlike the 47s were chambered in 545 by 39 which is this little guy relative to the 47s, which were in 762 by 39, the guy on the right. It's a nasty little round. Then the S stood for side folder, which this one was. So that's the AKS 74. And then the U is because of the cute little barrel. Small. This guy was 1750 and came from Marstar. And, uh, If you know, you know. Made famous by a bunch of movies, most recently The Walking Dead with Rick Grimes. This is the Colt Python. This is a blued model, four inches, and this trigger is unreal. 
We have snap caps in the way here, so it is safe for me to uh, do this. Oh man, even the double action is exquisite. Now this I think set me back around a grand and it came from the same dude that had the Thompson and the Rising. And one more that you're gonna see real soon. Slash, how about right now? This is a Bren, but it's not just any Bren. We're gonna lock that in there. This is our angled vertical foregrip. And this guy right here is actually the Commando Bren. At least if the Bren ever was a Commando, this is about as close as you're gonna get to it. This was the short barrel, the Mark III. And fun fact, this one was made by the Aussies. Yes, this is a Lithgow, made 1943, Mark I, 3-1, not quite sure what that's all about, but probably something to do with the fact that this was a Mark I gun that was converted to a Mark III. And the Mark I guns, which were earlier in the war effort, had more detail, they had this extra milling cut, they had some extra milling detail around the gas block over here, and they had this fancier rotary sight. Really dig that. Chambered in 303 British with these Kirby Boy magazines. The Bren, which was a British licensed Czech machine gun. You get Bren by taking half of Brno, which is the BR, and then half of Enfield, EN. And that gives you two plus two equals Bren. These are beautifully smooth machine guns. Not reciprocating folding charging handle. And also like the Thompson, something of a last round bolt hold. You have to remove the magazine, insert a new one, and then Boom diggity. The brand was used in World War II by the Allies to sock it to the Axis, then was surplus to bounce around several collections and finally ended up in mine for the pretty sum of $2,000. Now this right here, while a very sexy looking AR, is extra special because this is an AK in AR's clothing. Now, this patch is about the best way that I can show you this really quickly without taking this gun all apart. But as you can see, where ARs are typically direct impingement, this guy has a long stem on top of the BCG, and that is in fact a long stroke piston. The same type of piston system used in AKs. And Dean Sylvester, the wizard at PWS, has done a couple other cool things that have just made this thing a beautiful rifle to shoot. I do have a full video series back in the day on the Mark 107, a little shorty, aka the Diablo. Did a full overview, did a range video, and did a full disassembly. So if you want to learn more, go check that out. Otherwise, stay tuned for more content on this in the near future. And origin of that one, I picked up the lower on the east side of Canada. I picked the upper on the west side. Well, I picked the Mark 107 Diablo upper on the west side of Canada. And that Mark 111 upper came from PWS as a demo. A complete rifle will set you back in the low twos. Then step it up to the high twos and you've got something like this. The GQ Armory Paladin 10. Now this is an AR-10 platform, so we're talking 7.62 NATO or 308 relative to the 556 or 223 that that one is and that one is. We'll get to that in a moment. But this is a big boy and it is absolutely beautiful. I am in love with this receiver set. It's so sleek. And something extra fancy is that this bolt carrier group is not titanium carbon nitride, which a lot of the gold stuff you see is the tinned. This is TCN, which is an even Gucciier finish. And check out this trigger. Oh, boom giggity. One other fun fact about this guy is that it's sub seven pounds for 308 AR. That is saying something. And it's actually pleasant to shoot. And that was also a demo gun. And this, the Zero Delta Range Ready LVOA is the last demo I'm gonna show you tonight. There's a lot of other cool stuff still coming, so stick around, but this is another AR and it is a throwback to one of my favorites, actually my first AR-15. This guy right here, the original the Gucci AR, an LVOA S. This is a slightly shorter barrel system. Man, this is, this is a sexy unit. Long story short, Zero Delta bought out Warsport and uh, brought back the LVOA as a more consumer friendly option. I still miss the original, but this is, this is very cool. Check out this front end, pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. Stay tuned for more information on this guy as we go. Guys, we are almost done. There are three guns left. Well, three guns plus a bonus gun because I have one on the floor that's really interesting and 
I haven't talked about a whole lot. So that'll be last. We got this guy, we got this guy, we got a very rare French sniper or DMR, whatever. But it's gonna be, uh, what's gonna be coming up next? But first, pants. And not just any pants, literally the pants that changed my life. I have over 250 wears on this pair alone. These are UF Pro P40 All Terrains, and they are absolutely freaking amazing. Unrelated knife from Gear Pack's description box. I don't have an affiliate link for these, but I will link their site in the description. And what's more, I am so passionate about these pants, I made a whole 17 minute video about it. Check it out here. Or don't, but they really are incredible. My friends, this is the most expensive rifle currently on the wall. This is the Moss 4956 MSE. And this I got from a buddy of mine, who's a collector, he's a, actually an awesome collector of French rifles. And fun fact, Ian from Forgotten Weapons visited him to do some videos on some of his incredibly rare French guns. This is a few years ago. Anyways, big shout out to my buddy Paul at Canadian Firearms Museum on IG. This is really cool. We do have very interesting detachable magazines. This was also set up to fire rifle grenades. We got our spigot up front, as well as our grenade launching sights with integrated gas cutoff. Very slick. Now that rifle was actually a little bit rich for me to pick up at this time. Long story short, I'm saving up for a down payment on a super awesome piece of land. It's gonna mean awesome things for the channel as long as I am able to secure it in the next year or so. All that to say, I went halvesies with my good buddy Jared and for the handsome sum of three and a half or so thousand each, we are the happy co-parents. And then there's this little beauty, the Spanish Schnellfeuer. This is actually the Astra Model F which is incredibly, incredibly rare. Something like 1,150 of these things ever made. And check this out. Cocked. Hear the rattle? That rattle is an internal rate reducer that takes the fire rate of this down from the crazy 900 to 1,000 rounds per minute that the typical Schnellfeuer or Mauser 712 fires at to something around 300 to 400 rounds per minute. Something that actually makes this thing usable. Though it does still have a 10 round magazine, but 20s were also available. And I thought I had one. I was so disappointed. I found a 20 round marked as Astra Model F magazine from a small shop in the UK. Went through great pains to import it. Big thanks to Wolverine Supplies. Vicky, you put up with a lot of crap for me and you got that thing in here. And I was so sad to find out that it was actually a Mauser 712 magazine, not one for this. I'm still on the hunt for a Model F 20 rounder. Oh, by the way, I got this from Marstar for the tidy sum of 2,500 bucks. It is absolutely mint, so I do not feel bad about that whatsoever because the C96 is one of my favorite pistols. And while this is not a C96, it was a Spanish competitor of the day. And I'm so stoked to have such a fine piece of history in such nice shape. Now this I'm really excited about. This is an SLR receiver set and I have a really cool upcoming project with this thing. This set me back about 1100 bucks and what's extra cool about it is it's a clear anodized set. Now the Zero Delta and the PWS and the GQ Armory, those are all anodized black. Well, this is clear anodized. The same finish on the infamous Honey Badger. Technically a more durable coating and it has this really cool gold and silver finish. The reason for the two different colors is the two different grades of aluminum when they're clear anodized, they turn out these colors. And they were done by Mad Chemist 320 on Instagram. He does some really cool color anodized things and they, they actually look really awesome. And this thing turned out fantastic. Again, build planned with this thing. Super excited for it. Stay tuned, it's gonna be awesome and later this year. Finally with the bonus gun, the Israeli drawer. This thing is freaking weird, guys. This is really weird. This is the Israeli cousin to the Johnson light machine gun. And you can tell it's related because just like the Johnson is notoriously hard recoiling, this thing kicks like a mule as well. Very cool though, actually a removable barrel. And if you look at the back half, it does resemble the uh, second model Johnson light machine gun a lot more. This thing is missing a few trigger parts, but otherwise should be a full machine gun. And I got this from a collector up here for about 2,500 bucks. Now there were two types of drawers. The type one was a 303. It had the big long side curvy mag, very reminiscent of the Johnson. And then that guy down there was an eight mil. It's the type two 
All in all, there was like 4,000 made super rare guns. And while they were good guns on the range, apparently they did not hold up well at all to use in the field. Guys, hope you enjoyed the show a little bit longer this time, but it's fun to get a little more personal with you guys. Now guys, I want to share with you something else as well. A lot of these guns aren't owned by me personally. I'm a civilian and I just legally can't own most guns like this. In fact, literally all these guns right now, I cannot own personally. They're owned by a business. And that is due largely to their naughty nature. At least with a bunch of them, like that one and that one and that one, that one, and a couple of the ones down there. And technically this one, but it needs a little bit of work. Some of these other ones are just currently not ownable due to stupid bureaucracy. Actually, no, this one right here, the French gun. That gun, my buddy and I do legally own as civilians because it's just a simple semi-automatic civilian legal gun. But the rest, in their varying degrees of naughtiness, are not. It does make a lot of them a lot cheaper to acquire. None of them are civilian transferable. They're all business of business only. And uh, well, that's one more reason why I'm able to bring such cool content to you guys without being a freaking millionaire. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this longer form content. I definitely enjoy bringing it to you guys. The shorts can be stressful to get done. There's, I always, I do a video and it's always like five minutes long and I have to just chop and chop and chop to get it down to that sub one minute segment. And they're a lot of fun. They are a lot of fun and they reach a wide audience. So that's great. But it is nice to just expand on things and uh, get a little bit more personal with you guys at the same time. So for those of you who are still with me at the end of this rather long video, I want to thank you personally and let you know some other fun and exciting news coming to the channel soon. I have partnered up with a couple companies stateside and we're gonna be doing some sweet armored gun merch. I can't say more just yet, but there's gonna be some, uh, some really cool, really cool stuff and some really cool partners. So more on that in the coming weeks. Armored gun out. Boom diggity.